Perfect. So, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, today we have Dr. Uh, Surinarayan with us and he will be presenting his talk on slap tears, uh, recent approaches in uh, management and he will be specifically covering about uh, slap tear treatment versus slap repair SOS versus uh, bicep stenosis. Dr. Surya, you can start now please. Ah, okay sir. Good morning sir. I am Surinarayana. So, the, my topic for today is the slap tear in the shoulder uh, um, joint. And these are one of the important, uh, very intriguing uh, pathology, which is always pose a diagnostic challenge uh, clinically and radiologically also. So, so we, in brief, the, at the outset, I want to give a few introduction about the, what is lab tear, how it was uh, coming to um, in, uh, operative, um, evolved operative type of uh, um, methods and also diagnostic uh, methods. So yeah, it is called, the slap tear is nothing but it is a superior labrum uh, tear, which is extending entry to posterior. This was first described by Andrew in 1985. Uh, later, it is a Snyder who has uh, classified the uh, slap tear into four types and some other types also added re uh, recently. But among them, uh, but in uh, Snyder's study, the slap tear is, uh, the study is a retrospective study. In his uh, study, it was incidence was 6%. Among them, type 2 uh, occupies the major percentage of the uh, injuries. Uh, remaining is type 1 is the 21 percent. So what would be the mechanism if you consider th these are the two mechanisms which have been uh, proposed. One is the compression force where the uh, person will fall onto the outstretched um, the head head of the humerus forcing against the and slipping out uh, causing some sort of shearing force or the superior Labrum. Uh, next, uh, another important uh, mechanism is traction on the arm. This is described as a mapet at all. Uh, this is by sudden pull or throwing uh, of the uh, any object leading to uh, traction on the biceps anchor. So this is the uh, picture showing uh, what type of mechanism we uh, generally see for the slap tears. So one is the falling and outstretch and another is the throwing object. The second image shows uh, how the bicep anchor is attached and the whatever forces which pull. There's a, what is the important one is here is the pulling. Pulling and some sharing forces will cause the superior labrum detached from the uh, um, The next, some important anatomical features are there uh, regarding superior labrum. We need to uh, remember them. So the, what is the characteristic here is, uh, it is meniscite. It's like a triangular shape, looks like meniscite. And one of the another important is it's not intimately attached. It is loosely attached to the uh, labrum, uh, the glenoid. So and hence we have some uh, normal variants also like subglenoid leases. Recess is a small gap under the uh, labrum. It is commonly seen in, in almost seventy-three percent individuals will have this sort of labrum recess. So and one more uh, the origin come, uh, come to the origin of the biceps long head. It is uh, arises from the superior labrum as well as superior tubercular also, but is from eleven octa. 11 to 1 o'clock position. So, so normal variance is very common. It is seen in 30 to 14 percent individuals. Among them, the most important is the sublabral foramina among 9 percent individuals. Uh, and that's a B4 complex where you see almost absence of all atrial superior labrum. And uh, there is a most important is a card like MGHL, which is often confused as the biceps slide. So, these are the two or three diagrams I showed here. So, there is sublabral foramina between 1 to 3 o'clock position and um, sublabral recess in between 11 to 1 o'clock position and the most before complex is between 1 to 3 o'clock position with absence of the absence of the so anterior superior labrum the next what is the biomechanics with regard to biceps cerebral complex this is a very significant by a very important structure has a significant uh, a role in uh, preventing some instability so biceps cerebral uh, mainly they uh, they prevent they restrict the translation rotational uh, offer translation rotation stability of the shoulder jet and also it counterbalance uh, by a uh, counterbalance the forces caused by uh, short, short head of the biceps uh, during uh, various actions and also stabilize the shoulder in most uh, vulnerable portion. You know, the abduction extreme is a very vulnerable portion for the shoulder. The chance of dislocation are high in that portion. So it's also have a role in stabilizing that vulnerable portion. So that the, any uh, loss of uh, intactness of the labral complex always causes the, uh, some instability and it, it completely deprives the shoulder of the concavity compression, one of the important uh, mechanism which keep the head of humorous against the glenoid during um, uh, various actions of the 
harm. So when it comes to classification, the, you know, Snyder is a classified these types into one, two, three, four, and other also added. So th these are four are very, very important commonly we see in the, our regular practice. So come to, uh, if you come, uh, come to the uh, type of mechanism we already discussed about the repeated overload maybe, and fall onto ostrich run. These are repetitive overload causes most commonly type one and type two, and fall on ostrich and causes type three, four, and six type of. These are the bucket and type of death. We'll discuss later. And the, so type one is a type C, type five and type seven is generally more commonly seen in glioma humeral giant is It's not a primary pathology. It's also with other pathologies in the shoulder. So in, in a pictorial depiction of the, these lesions. Uh, type 1 lesions, type 1 lesions, most are the, uh, seen in uh, older individuals. These are generally considered as a degenerative states. And we do not have significant uh, presentation or complaints from this type of lesion. So here you see the uh, fraying of the superior labrum where anchor is attached, but just fraying at the attachment, uh, how it looks, the uh, picture is like this. In uh, arthroscopically also we see uh, this sort of attachment, these are uh, biceps anchor and you are fraying uh, some fibrillation and some sort of fibers being uh, as if at, uh, detached from the superior labrum. And in, in MRI, in coronal oblique, you see the very clearly seen uh, linear pattern, uh, uh, high signal uh, intensity linearly extending uh, medially. So these are the uh, various um, in the picture we see in MRI. So in case of type two, it's a very important lesion, also most common lesion. And it is the, it is the detachment of the superior labrum. The, the picture you see clearly the gap developed between the superior anchor and the glenoid, superior glenoid margin. So this is the superior glenoid labrum detachment. It's always pathological. And also most of the, one of the important thing you, you have to remember here is the, it is associated with the, uh, uh, some sort of uh, instability because uh, superior glenohumeral ligament and middle glenohumeral Element also attaches to the area, uh, this area. So that's why this is very important. We need to most of them end up in uh, surgical interventions. So in MRI, you see the globular shadow, you see. So generally, you don't see any signal. So if we see a signal type, this is a fluid sequence, high signal intensity between the labrum and the glenoid. So that indicates the superior labrum uh, type 2 lesion, slab type. In type 3 lesions, you see. The labrum is uh, turned down uh, uh, inwards, and also there is a gap developed between the labrum and the glenoid. So it's called bucket handle type of tear. So you see bucket handle where the glenoid, the whitish one is the glenoid superior uh, rim of the glenoid, and the bicep anchor. You see the bucket handle type of tear, one flap of the glenoid, uh, mean extending onto the uh, detached onto the glenoid surface. So in case of in MRI, you see a clear cut uh, density. Uh, there's a low signal intensity, a high signal uh, linear one extending laterally. So this is the picture we see in case of the uh, superior labrum uh, bucket handle tear of the type three one. Next is the type three one, type four. It is a nothing but extension of the type three. Then the same tear extends into the glenar, into the um, biceps anchor, biceps tendon. That is considered as a type four. It's, it's a high uh, generally involves high injury, uh, high I um, mean, uh, injury mechanism is severe. In, in the injury is severe. You see this sort of the tears. Uh, you see in, in this arthroscopy, you see the blood, this is the uh, bicep tendon, where a flap of the bicep tendon and uh, a labrum attaching the a flap of the bicep tendon uh, attached to the labrum and a glenoid is visible. And also, you see in, in MRI, the clearly enlargement and abnormal signal instance at the bicep side. This is very, very specific one. So you can easily identify the, where where is uh, shadow is uh, intensity is enlarged and also very whitish uh, um, in, uh, high signal it is seen at the level of the superior anchor. So the, this is the type four lesion. So what are the clinical tests we generally use to uh, diagnose this slap test? So these are the various tests we use: Obrist test, compression, rotation, speed, Mayo, and Kibler and test, slide test, crank test, Kimsa. So among all this, as per this Snyder et al., the speed test and compression rotation tests are very helpful and gives almost uh, high index of suspicion, more sensitive also uh, regarding the bicep tear clinically. So how do we uh, we need to know how, how we do Obrist active compression test here? The patient is seated uh, with the uh, arm in 90 degree forward flexion, 10 degree abduction, uh, where in that portion, uh, abduction is very, adduction, sorry, adduction is important. So in that portion, we have to apply downward pressure on the uh, forearm, uh, on the arm, 
with fora either pronated or supinated the, that pressure is resisted by the patient so in this maneuver the positive test is considered when there is a pain on the pronation which is relieved by the supination so this is very important test and a high sensitivity specific for the slap test so in mri so in mri there are certain uh, features we have to look for uh, to diagnose the slap test the best is the coronal oblique view uh, fat saturation uh, uh, technique here uh, and sometimes if you add 1% gadolinium it increases the diagnostic accuracy and sensitivity specific also then what we have to see is the four uh, uh, characteristics we have to look for the signal direction morphology location and width these are very important we have to look for this this one if the, the picture is showing that the the tear which is there signal extending the extending laterally so this is the extending laterally go laterally if it is completely there is a but until there so there is some tear is there so ex extending laterally and irregular margin the, you, you generally you see uh, labrum is triangular very smooth you don't see any intensity between the uh, labrum and the superior margin of the glenoid so the irregular margin and the gap must be more than 3 mm is more than 3 mm and located at the base is very important it must be located at the biceps anchor and also extending posteriorly for consecutive uh, section uh, you see uh, from the posterior to anterior you see the uh, signal starts and that is these are the four important uh, features you have to look for the uh, look in the mri for uh, to diagnose the uh, slap tear so in case of uh, if you do arthroscopic uh, uh, examination of the shoulder to suspect it as a pathological lesion we need to have this three we have to look for these three features there is a pathological if there is some uh, these are the sublabral fraying is there which can be seen in type 1 also but most important is superior glenoid chondromalacia there is some uh, cartilage changes are there so always suspect the pathological lesion and also most important sghl injury so sghl injury involves uh, it happens only in traumatic incidents or some sort of pull happen on the uh, biceps angle so i already discussed about this one i think to mention so then the, the diagnosis is over then what has to be done about how to op, um, treat these conditions so there are two options always available one is a non operative treatment and also operative treatment in non operative treatment we just offer some uh, some sling and some um, exercises uh, and also analgesics but non operative treatment is a limited role sometimes we have uh retail possibilities there low return of the play also we have to individualize the uh, this type of treatment so not applicable to all so operative treatment one of the uh, recent uh, trends in managing the slap tests because high incidence of uh, uh, high uh, energy trauma is happening and sports injury is also more common so then uh, type 2 tears also we are uh, getting more, more number of type 2 tears which is almost most of the is pathological so on the operative treatment we can go for tibridema so operative treatment specifically it is individualized you have to check for the complete assessment you have to um, uh, instability or rule out the instability and the, uh, the uh, complaints from the patient uh, clinically what will the instability and the suffering from the patient all this you have to consider to plan uh, what type of treatment we have to uh, suit to the patient needs so the arthroscopy uh, debridement may be maybe slap repair and also biceps tenodesis then so for the best outcome so what we consider is the slap repair biceps tenodesis tenotomy alone so these are the various the three options we generally have to choose for uh, among these three which which is the best one uh, is a is a big uh, matter of uh, uh, debate generally as um, now as per recent literature there is some towards the um, more towards the biceps tenodesis than slap tear uh, slap repair and tenotomy can be done only in associate other uh, lesions are there in the um, uh, in the shoulder where repair cannot be done and also per symptomatic relief tenotomy is less suitable but most of the times uh, the uh, option is uh, would be between slap repair and biceps tenodesis so when slap repairs generally uh, considered only it is it is considered in case of acute repair, acute tears and also in younger patients who has no associate long ahead of the biceps tenotomy pathology so this how you start so placing the anchor uh, over the uh, under the superior glen uh, labrum complex uh, through the anterior superior portal and the suture threads uh, uh, now we have to retrieve through the suture lasso from the um, glenoid uh, from the medial end to the lateral side so now suture lasso is passed if you see 
to settle the suture under the superior um, biceps lateral complex. Now we are passing through the anterior uh, portal, anterior inferior, that is the bio clock portal. Then, so passing under the, this is very important, under the exactly superior uh, biceps lateral complex from medial to lateral. And GI is, is passed through and along with one thread, a GI is uh, retrieved through the anterior portal. The, uh, the suture is uh, shuttled through this uh, pathway. The knot is made around the, uh, this by superior biceps lateral complex. So this knotting is made through the uh, anterior inferior portal. That is the five o'clock portal. So this is how making the knot, the single suture, a single loop technique. Uh, uh, most of the um, uh, less, I mean, not severe tears we use, and uh, also uh, if it is more separation, you see, you can go for a single suture, double loop technique also. This is the final picture of the uh, slab prepare type two with the knot in situ. Uh, good uh, hold of the, uh, the separation. So, thank you. The next video is about the bicep tenodesis, one of the important uh, surgery we generally recommend for bicep tenodesis after the uh, age of 50 years. So this consists of the uh, portal uh, establishment of the portal is same. The through uh, viewing uh, standard posterior portal, we establish anterior and five o'clock portal. And we depress. So you see the fraying of the superior labrum, see the uh, these fibers separated and the bicep chancre is loose and inflamed. Uh, you see the red uh, I mean the inflammatory tissue around the superior bicep chancre. Now, the initially, we pass a, a latching stick uh, through the biceps to have a pull. Uh, then we detach the uh, bicep chancre at the attachment. This is a board big instrument We're passing through to the penetrator. So to hold the biceps, not to for the uh, any other um, fatty nodes. This is to hold the biceps to pull the biceps while passing the under suture of the superior part of the group. The loop is made. Then we go uh, to the uh, bicepital groove to identify the uh, the tendon and we deprive the bicepital groove so that the tissue is very thickened and very uh, inflamed also around the bicepital groove. Then we isolate the uh, biceps and see the biceps tendon, we isolate the biceps tendon. Then we have to make uh, anchor a hole, hole at the exact under the bicep tendon at the superior most part of the bicepital groove. So we displace the tendon and we place the anchor at the uh, superior most part of the biceptal group. Till hole is made. Now, this is through the anterior inferior portal, that is uh, five o'clock portal. 
then with the help of the uh, board break instrument we pass through the tendon and to retrieve the suture thread one of the suture limbs And we have to see that there is no entanglement or overlapping of the on the suture threads here, that is important. Otherwise, the suture loop is not uh, very tight, it may slip up and it causes the excessive pressure on the tendon. So, this, this is how we make a loop. The same thing is taken again, the form a loop, it's called lasso loop. So, then this is a loop, fine loop, you see, very nicely made here. Tendon is also seen very clearly, is inflamed and thick. So now final knot is applied. So all this process is happening at the superior end of the uh, biceptal groove. So after this knotting apply, already we have applied one racking stitch. Uh, so we cut the just above this uh, suture, uh, the extra length, and it is, it is retrieved through the anterior portal. So this is how we do biceps stenosis is very important in case of uh, if the slap tear is there, high grade slap tear and more than 50 years individuals and in case of also between um, more commonly more than 40 or 50 years of case group. It has a uh, very significant uh, recovery uh, outcome also. So in case of, if you go to, through the literature, what uh, literature says regarding between the uh, biceps stenosis, whether repair versus uh, two options we have most, you know, that is repair and biceps stenosis. There are two important uh, articles are there, uh, which, uh, which is uh, to show and to uh, uh, give us uh, a complete account regarding the, which procedure is most useful when considering for the, uh, on the treatment of biceps uh, slap tear. In case one, the, the first one is the biceps stenosis demonstrates lower reoperation rates compared to the slap repair for treatment of slap tears in large carcinoma. There is a one study by uh, made by the uh, Nicole M. Truong and Nicole Civilis et al. So in this one, so they have uh, uh, retrospectively studied the population who underwent various type of procedures. So for the slap repair, so they have seen. Uh, they have compared with respect to the reoperation rate and the outcome. So, in, in case of uh, uh, in this study, they have showed that the biceps stenodesis have low revision rate than the slap repair. The slap because maybe uh, some other factors may be uh, influencing here, but most important the significant difference is there in case of revision rates in case of biceps stenodesis. And also, uh, there is an incidence number of uh, surgeries uh, slap tear because it is uh, spanned about uh, 10 years, I think. Uh, the, in this, in this, their study, there is uh, a clear evidence that the slap repair is gradually decreasing in incidence and bicep tumors is gradually uh, slowly increasing the uh, in, uh, number of surgeries of the bicep tumors are increasing. The other study, which is a recent one, so whether in comparing the repair versus bicep tumors is, is a systematic review done by the Osman Sivan and Kiram P. Sell. So their, uh, their uh, conclusion is bicep tumors has a higher return to pre-injury sports level. That's very important. Uh, outcome we expect and higher patient satisfaction with respect to uh, presentation like uh, elevation of the initial complaints and lower reoperation. These are very important that we consider generally when planning for treatment. But compared to compared to functional scores, are not much difference between these two uh, subgroups. 
So the, the final take home message is, uh, so a slap tests are a very significant lesion, but seen in 10% uh, shoulder arthroscopies. And uh, most of them we have to identify which is normal, uh, which is abnormal, pathological. And most of them is generally seen in a active population with overhead throwing and also after significant trauma. Uh, slap lesion almost, um, it is it should be suspected before surgery and uh, discovered. So clinically, uh, they're not, uh, um, important tests are there, but we can suspect. And most important is the arthroscope is confused. Even imaging also, it gives some clue regarding the pathology. Sometimes we may uh, confuse uh, normal as well. And, uh, and we have to rule out instability. So that is the most important to rule out instability. And plan the surgery with repair and treatment is the best outcome. Thank you.